This is my fifth term here. I've never once collected anything from the National Assembly. And I know I speak for a great majority of members of this house. Great, great majority. And because of that, I will take this matter and this allegation and accusation very serious. And I will give the minister 24 to 48 hours. And Clark, I want you to back this up with a letter from this house. To give the minister 24 to 48 hours to publish the names, the contracts so given, the dates, because obviously these things will be documented. Unveil the companies of the 60% projects that were given to members of the National Assembly. Failing which, Failing which, Hello and welcome to another brand new day and of course it's today in the news. My name is Precious Chukudi and I have with me in the studio my co-host Damgala Obushaki. How are you Dami? I'm very fine. You look really very fine. Okay. <laughs> Alright let's move straight to the front pages of the newspaper and I'll be starting off with Vanguard and our main headline uh, NDDC Web Stackle at Fabio Senate uh, Walks Ojubo out. Uh, the riders uh, name lawmaker contractors in 48 hours by Jabi Amila tells Akpabio. Uh, Senate panel walks out uh, Ojubo over call on panel chair to step down. Those after Akpabio must tread with caution. Anang Foundation and uh, Lagos records 88 uh, new infections as confirmed cases rise to 37,801. Also, the photo story we have condolence visit to late Isa Fontois' home, and um, uh, there are a lot of dignitaries who went to visit uh, the widow of former president of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, Madame Ismaila Isa Fontois. And stories above, we have uh, I'm in good relationship with the President Buhari, says Jonathan. You can see that story on page 8 and on page 13. Obasanjo Lawan, NGE Tunumbu. PDP governors, others, Mount Malam Ismaila Isafontua, and stories uh, beneath. We have six and eight uh, killings, presidency, Senate in war of words, uh, gunmen kills 11 persons in another Kaduna attack, and stories beneath. Uh, Mago, how Malami frustrated extradition of uh, Desiani, other fugitives. You can see that story also on page eight, and lastly, on the front page of Vanguard, we have uh, Ondo APC. I'll embark on reconciliation, says uh, Akiri Dulu. And away from Vanguard, we move straight to the Punch newspaper. And on the front page of the Punch newspaper, we have um, recovered vehicles auctioned to presidential villa uh, ministries. And this is coming from Mago, says and um, vehicles allocated to government agencies after presidential approval. Salami led panel reject letter by suspended EFCC chairman. And you can see these on page two. And moving on to the stories above, we have um, Aquabio given 48 hours to name lawmakers awarded NDDC contracts. Still on page eight, we have Onyema, SGF, PTF members, ministers undergo test. And on page two, presidency, presidency disagrees as National Assembly acts service chief to resign. And uh, moving on to stories below, on page 8, we have uh, National Assembly asks Buhari to stop Kiyamo from 774,000 jobs per vision. And on page 6, four killed, two injured as car clones into Ogun River. And on page 8, all you to repatriate 40 indigenous in Lebanese slave, camp, slave camps. Page 7, Jonathan visit Villa, says relationship with Buhari Cordia. And lastly, on pages four and five, we have um, a 35-year-old man gets life imprisonment for defiling two-year-old girl. 
and uh, the writer says a foster jailed six months to to the for defrauding African lover. And that's all we have on the front page of the punch. From there, we'll move straight to the nation. And on the nation newspaper, we have a major headline: Service chiefs uh, seven hundred and seventy-four thousand jobs. A lawmaker stake on Buhari. And the writers, we have a uh, president rejects call to sack security top brass. Senators uh, rep Kiamo shouldn't recuse. Also, we have tribute as Fontua is buried. Alawan Bajami Abila, governors uh, Obasanjo Tunumbu Mons. And stories above, we have why Todd Milan Bridge must close. Repair of 3.5 km from Friday. And speaker to Akpabio, lease rep contractors. Minister gets ultimatum. And lastly, on the front page of the nation, we have CBN approves 50 billion Naira revival uh, pill for textile. And that's all we have for you on the front pages of the papers. But moving straight to the newspaper analysis segment, where we'll be talking with our guest in the studio. He's Mr. Larry Arugundadi, our Executive Director, International Press Center, IPC. We're going to go on a short break and we'll call him in. Alright, welcome back and if you're just still joining us, it's still today in the news on Vanga Live. My name is Precious Chupidi and I have my co-host with me. Jamila Wushaki. And we have a guest who will be joining us via Zoom. He's in the person of Mr. Larry Arugundade, Executive Director, International Press Center, IPC. Good morning, sir. You're welcome on the show. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, let's just move straight to uh, a major headline this morning. And I'm sure you've been following through with all that's been happening with the NDDC. I mean, it's, it's in our faces. We can, you know, look over it. Yes, I, I think uh, it, it's good that we have the story that didn't make it the news headline. And uh, actually, this is a story that the media... Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Uh, hello, sir. All right. So uh, yeah. we'll just continue till we are able to get through with yeah. him, and then uh, we'll still be back and forth with uh, you know the NDDC group of how um, um, we started from Joy Nune last week Friday when she came out saying mentioning some forms of allegations mm -hmm. and then we saw what unfolded with uh Akpabio and also yeah, so I'll, I'll, okay. I'll say that uh, what's happening is more like a theater of the actor as far as uh, the editing is concerned. And as a matter of fact uh, Mr. Akpabio is not the only one who is saying that this thing probably the media should be asking for the kind of independence uh, that you prove because the, the minister says Back on what you said on allegations 
and uh, you know the center probably made some form of allegations to the uh, chairman of the lawmakers where he said that uh, some of them were beneficiaries of the contract from N yes and also uh, Femi Bajami Amila has uh, given him 48 uh, hours to yes to mention the names of those lawmakers how do you think this will play out well it is difficult but I think that uh, what the media should do now is the potato has to be tomorrow. Uh, we should ensure that uh, by now I think the, the media should also go to the minister, go to a party, and be asking the question Are you already confining the list of this contractor? So that let's see what really happens. So that by the time the deadline is passed, what we do not want. Hello, sir. Hello. I think we're experiencing some say, network yeah. challenges there. This morning. All right, but you know, he was just making mention of how the minister should start to compile, you know, names of contractors, because Ricky, really he's been giving 48 hours, like how they would say he that must come with equity, um, must come with clean hands, you know. So if you're making mentions on live broadcast where everybody's watching and saying that some of the lawmakers are. You know, beneficiaries of the NDC NDDC contracts. Then yes. I think that uh, it's high time that uh, these people come out with all the proofs of you know statements like that. Are you with us, sir? Yes, I'm with you. So uh, I think there are other headlines. I don't know. Which all right. So no, I'll, no, don't worry. Just I'll I'll take you along with uh, the headlines. So we're still talking right. on NDDC. And uh, the Annan Foundation has also called out people uh, after Akpabi to tread with caution. Uh, so you know, like I, a, a minister of the Niger Data Affairs, like he's been called to speak about what's been going on. Does it not mean that uh, he's accountable to the people to let them know what's going on? Why are these people saying, uh, if you're, you know, speaking about the minister, you should tread with caution? Are we not supposed to be aware of what's going on in the NDDC? We, we are, yes, you know, there's what we call you know, the right to know. Uh, the people of the country have the right to know about all the affairs of government, whatever is going on in government. So this matter should not be turned into kind of, uh, you know, you know, ethnic warfare or alleged you witch. Know, if you can just carefully, like I said, Section 88 of the Constitution empowers the National Assembly to perform good by the country. So they actually have the right to invite ministers to give the form. But beyond that, we all know that oil is the line of wire of the country. And this is what the public will solve a particular problem. But for a long period of time, we had the right for the Niger Delta, uh, Niger Delta militancy, and this was supposed to be a kind of solution. So people are really worried. People are embarrassed about you know, the allegations that are being made uh, that you know, an, an agency under that ministry will be spending money on so-called healthcare and in fact spending much more than the Ministry of Health. So we have the right to know what's going on and we also have the right to know if members of the National Assembly are comfortable as Minister Apabio alleged. That was why I was talking about maybe we should be looking at the kind of public inquiry so that we can get to the roots of this matter. My point really is that nothing should be given all right, sir. Uh, are you still with us? Hello, sir. Mr. Larry. Ah, there's no things that the network is just working this morning. Well, you know, we're still talking about the Ibrahim Marco, or the uh, whole probing of the team. I know, which really, really surprises people with the way it's going. And then, um, I'm just reading, I'm just looking at the comment now with people saying that it should publish the name. You know, like you said, that, you know, going on the, you know, going on national TV to just. Hello, sir, I think it's back. Yeah. Can you hear me clearly now, yes. sir? Yes, very clearly. Okay. Okay, so let's just move on. And, uh, you know, we are seeing a case of the APC party uh, calling out the PDP party, uh, saying that they are scared of the outcome of the forensic audit. What do you think about that situation? And the ABC party is calling the PDP party out and saying that they are scared of the outcome of the forensic audit. Well, you know, this is where we, we the media, need to be careful. That's what I'm saying, that uh, 
if we allow politicians to have their way, they will turn this into uh, a battle of you know, you know, PDP, NDC. For me, this is not about PDP, it's not about NDC. It's not about uh, you know, the United States, it's not about the our control and It's about the interest of Nigerian people. Because we all suffer collectively when we have the Nigerian Delta crisis. It caused a lot of disruption in our economic system. Pipelines were being blown up. So if an agency is established to provide infrastructure and they are not doing that, we need to get to the roots of that. So for me, uh, it's not a case of uh, CPC calling out for GDP. We shouldn't allow politicians who are in that process. That's the point I'm making. And uh, whoever has useful information, that can help us to get to the root of this matter. If provide it, if NDC has information, let them provide it for the PDP. But what is important is that this is a matter of uh, heightened public interest, if I could put it that way, and it should be treated as such. So, do you, um, do you think that the President Buhari's administration has demonstrated zero tolerance to corruption? Well, I, I, I think that uh, we should be surprised that we are seeing this the corruption or admissions of corruption or that government that is supposed to fight corruption. So it means that uh, a lot of things are still missing out there. The, we, we just hope that by the time this government uh, network problem or having network issues mm -hmm. this morning. Alright, so um, it's still talking of the whole situation of you know, the, you know People finding out, we need public inquiries to find out exactly who are the people who are beneficiaries. Of so all, all the all the events, I, I think uh, the call to question uh, whether you know, the war in the corruption is uh, actually being waged or if the war is being properly waged. I think that's a problem somewhere. Okay. All right, sir. You know, um, sometime last week and this week, now we've been seeing different uh, headlines on the papers and also on social media about this whole corruption and the embattled the um, acting chairman of the EFCC. So also, uh, we're seeing it that um, you know he was accused that uh, uh, he frustrated the extradition of the former minister of petroleum, that's uh, the Desiani Alice Madwike. And now um, the, um, the acting EFCC chairman, that was um, of course, he said that um, it's not actually true. That instead of them saying that he's the one, that it's actually the AGF, that's the um, Bakal Malami, who actually frustrated the extradition of the fugitives. So, do you think he's saying this uh, because of uh, because of the allegations against him? Yes, obviously, you know, the, the, the problem is when you have uh, the kind of situation we face as well. Uh, truth is always the first contract. We always say that. Uh, Conflict and regionality. That uh, uh, when there's a crisis, when there's a conflict, truth is always the first victim of that conflict. And the challenge we really have now for the media is how do we establish the truth between the uh, minister, the minister of uh, the attorney general of the tradition, and uh, you know, the, the, the acting chairman of the EFCC, you know, you know, whether suspended or not. Uh, but again, it means that uh, we have problems with. Of government in terms of fighting corruption. As a matter of fact, if the police had been adequately empowered, adequately kicked, we probably wouldn't be all these agencies to fight corruption, the ESDC, ICDC. You know, in, in other countries, these are the commissions to perform fighting for this. In Israel, our president, Mr. Yao, the current president of the country, was investigated, was questioned by the police over allegations of corruption. That that is how it's supposed to be. So again, this is something uh, for the media to continue to look at, for us to do investigations where the journalists come, for us to know who is telling the truth. So for clearly, it's also an embarrassment to the country that with the amount of... Hello, sir. I think we're still having the next location. Okay, so basically we're talking we're talking about uh, this Magu stuff. So you know, he responded to the allegations that you know that he frustrated the extradition of um, you know the former minister of petroleum that's uh, Daisy Annie, and also he denied refusing. So I mean, good for all who okay. have I interdicted, and I think it's a problem that we don't have uh, the country to answer questions. 
Okay, so still talking about this whole corruption and all that, and we're still talking about uh, Bastille Battle insecurity in Nigeria. So I missed all this thing now. PDP Kako, PDP Kakos in the House of Rep has said that it will commence impeachment uh, proceedings against President Muhammad Buhari. That's if uh, the blackmail is against the National Assembly and insecurity in the country were not checked. What do you think about this uh, PDP threatening uh, the impeachment of the president? Well, I, I think uh, you know, impeachment is not something that uh, you know, we, we, uh, you, you really have to have uh, fundamental questions of uh, violation of the vote of office. I think that what uh, uh, the, the opposition party should be doing and what the rest of the country should be doing says that uh, the, the president needs to take decisive action. So all this idea of uh, uh, the security that there nothing can happen to them. I don't think it goes well uh, for, for the war, you know, against the, the banditry, for the war against the terrorism, for the insecurity in the country. And uh, we, we've seen examples, you know, elsewhere, uh, in institutions of international war, where countries, you know, they, they jump with the leadership, they repeat the leadership of, uh, of the military to ensure that the war is defended before. And uh, I have one of those Nigeria who so actually told that. Uh, Okay, okay, you know, still saying that, you know, the, the caucus leader of this, of PDP said that uh, he is giving, is giving them four weeks ultimatum to the executive to provide uh, security to Nigerians and commence a proper cleaning of, of the embarrassing and notorious corruption cases, that's of the EFCC and also the NDDC. So do you think this four weeks, within this four weeks is achievable? Because for a long time now we'll be battling this. So these four weeks, do you think they'll be able to settle this whole situation? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's expected that this could be done, you know, within, uh, within a formal week. I, I found that the, you know, the spirit of opposition uh, should be talking about uh, how, you know, we could have a much more all and compatible process uh, that allows us to unravel, you know, all these, uh, you know, allegations, problems of corruption around it. I think we still have any issues with the network. Yeah, the network is been a challenge. It's very, this very, very big challenge for us. Okay, so you know, I was talking about these um, PPE, the insecurity issues and all, but you know, the insecurity actually this period it has really, really. I think yeah, since yeah, so, yeah, they are important thing for that. We can't ignore the opposition party. We can't ignore the PDP. They control about the half the government. But I also feel that. Uh, we, we, we shouldn't allow them to set the agenda you know, for what we should be doing. Because the media is set the agenda, and uh, there, there are many stakeholders in all this fight. And for me, don't let us reduce this thing to the level of joke to say that all this has been for some people. But definitely, we need more seriousness on the part of government because uh, everybody is really embarrassed. Anybody in Nigeria with conscience is really embarrassed. And this embarrassment has been expressed in several ways. I'm sure you have seen a lot of, uh, you know, comic streets, a lot of videos where people are capturing what is happening. And so it's like the more you look, uh, the less you see the change that you are supposed to see. So if, uh, if PDP actually commenced the impeachment uh, proceedings against uh, President Mohamed Buhari, from your own opinion, how do you think it will go? Well, they are free to, I mean, that would then be a matter of a uh, constitution to be a matter of uh, the part of the uh, national assembly. And if they have a grant for impeachment, they say, I mean, there's also freedom of expression, freedom of participation, their political party, they definitely do have the right. So if they feel that they have commission grant and they want their members in the national assembly to do the proceedings, then go ahead. For us to be there, for us to report the diverse side, to look at the merits of the case, to do proper analysis and put you know, the matter in, uh, in, you know, uh, in front of the public. And of course, if that happens, obviously what we want to expect the, the president, the presidency, the agency, we also put up their defense. So for me, if they have the right, I mean, it's not as if I'm going to read. But I'm just saying that the end of also this is serious. Okay, so let's talk about the insecurity. You know, at least um, 11 people have been killed by gunmen in, um, in another attack in Kaduna. That's uh, barely 24 hours um, after 21 people were killed by bandits 
in uh, Kakum Daji. That's only uh, uh, only last week, 24 people were also killed in three different um, local government area in um, that's uh, in Zango Kataf area, also in Kaduna. So, what do you think is actually going on? Why the killings are still happening? We're still talking about insecurity right now in 2020, where we are still battling uh, COVID 19 and also corruption. Why do you think this whole killing is still going on? Well, you see, uh, there are, I think there are three explanations uh, one to offer uh, for this continued uh, insecurity. Can you hear me? Can you Hello? Okay, still network issue. Still network issue. But you're not talking about uh, these. Uh, it's so surprising when you just hear um, 11 uh, persons were killed, 24 persons were killed, um, 12. You know, it's a very, very sad thing. It's just like you just wonder sometimes are these human beings being killed? Yeah, so What's going on? Yes. I think there are about three or two explanations for the government. The first is that it shows that in spite of the amount of money that has been invested in this fight, there's a problem with uh, our security agency. Uh, and uh, to that extent, uh, I think that uh, uh, it also leads us back to the question of whether uh, the leadership of uh, the security agency should not be uh, rejected at this point in time. I think the other issue really is not to show that uh, there, is, there are deeper problems of uh, poverty, of economic crisis, but there are things that are driving to the crime. So again, we can be, we can be looking at uh, the question of whether you know, the so-called economic program that are supposed to ameliorate the suffering of the people have actually uh, been effective to the extent that people still feel that uh, they will cry and they will pay. But you see, the political leadership too, there is also a way to meet their control for security. Because look at just the end of the talk about the fact that people will jump any good money anyhow. There are, there are many Nigerians out there who feel that uh, it's not come working, working to earn a living, that you know they just want to you know be as if these people have access to our resources and can find it anyhow. They 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 feel justified to take this you know the part of crime. But at the end of the day the country suffers for it. So for me there has to be I don't want to talk in this part of the threshold because that the threshold itself has become uh, overbody. But definitely, the matter now goes beyond you know, regular briefings, the president invites the security chiefs, they are fighting. Uh, for Iraq, there is, uh, there is this to invest much intelligent gathering. We are at the age of uh, information technology, and that's the way in which you could actually fight the uh, your crime. And then we also need more accountability of the resources that are being deployed to the war against terrorism, against the banditry across the, across the country. Uh, we need more accountability. Uh, we need to know because in other places where bodies are voted for things like this, details are provided, including you know details of uh, you know the equipment that are being purchased, where they are being deployed, and the rest of them. So we, we need more accountability as far as the war against the soldiers in the country. All right, so I still want to ask you on, uh, you know, the service chief. Do you think in your own uh, opinion that the service chief should leave for new ideas to handle the nation's uh, security challenges? Hello, sir. Can you hear me clearly? Hello, sir. I'm still on the network mm -hmm. issue. Well, you know, it's just the way we've had it with, you know, the National Assembly calling for... Yes, I was asking your own opinion. Do you think that the service chief should leave uh, for new ideas to handle the nation's uh, security challenges? Yes, I, I think so. Might not be further get out of place because at least at the level of the place, we've had uh, fairly you know, regular things. But I think at the level of uh, you know, the army and uh, the other army uh, forces, we, need, we do need some changes at this point in time. Uh, as uh, you know, new ideas will be brought in, new approaches, and uh, hopefully that will also inspire confidence in the rapid fire. Because we're worried that uh, we have situations where general battle, we have situations where rapid fire soldiers, so that there is some level of uh, uh, distrust or perhaps loss of confidence in the current leadership. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Larry Arokundade, Executive Director of uh, International Press Center, IPC. Thank you for joining us this morning and sharing your thoughts with us. For inviting me on your show, uh, I do apologize for the interruption. You know the problem of the internet connectivity. Yeah, we know. I do appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, too. All right, that's all we have for you on uh, today in the news. Remember that for you to find out more of our top stories, you can go on our website, www.vanguardngr.com to find out more of our top stories at the very minute. And if quality, you can like, share, and subscribe on all our social media platforms showing on your screen. My name is Precious Chukudi, and I have with me my co-host, Daniel Thank you for watch watching. Remember to stay safe.